Hello mga kapers, how was your day? I'm excited with this topic. It's the nursing intervention of the congestive heart failure. I choose three nursing diagnoses based on the manifestation, namely the decreased cardiac output, impaired gas exchange, and fluid volume excess. I discuss some of the manifestation or signs and symptoms based on the alterations in each intervention. I try to address the different signs and symptoms and how we're going to provide bedside care and improve your clinical eye. You can check the link below the descriptions of videos where I discuss the pathophysiology of congestive heart failure, the risk factors, and laboratory tests. Try to check it first so that you can understand the discussion. During the discussion, Miss May will help me look at her. <laughs> One of my favorite is my videos are not perfect, but I like to add avatar. Look at the eyebrow. I don't want to edit because I think it's funny and it makes me smile. Moving on, please support my channel. Continue na I need more views and subscription. Make some comments, please. To what topic you want me to discuss? Like, share, and subscribe. Your nurse on duty is back for the continuation of the congestive heart failure discussion. So, let's start. I made a mnemonic of different signs and symptoms of right and left congestive heart failure. You can check the link in the description of videos where I discuss signs and symptoms in each rationale. I call this mnemonic as decrease low letter d stands for distended neck vein which is the hallmark of right congestive heart failure and right atrium dysfunctions e or enlarged heart or cardiomegaly prolonged period of compensatory mechanism of the heart because of functional and structural dysfunctions letter c crackles it indicates fluid retentions in the alveoli that may result complications, which is pulmonary edema. Letter R, report weight gain. Increase more than 2 pounds per day. So it indicates more congestion. Excess fluids, what are the symptoms that you need to check? Pedal edema, anasarca, congested liver, presence of pulmonary edema. Anxiety or the patient is anxious of impending dome because the patient is having palpitation, arrhythmias, shortness of breath, and dyspnea. S. Stroke volume below 70 ml per contractions of the left ventricle thereby resulting to decreased cardiac output. E. For edema. Letter D. For dyspnea which is the early signs of congestion. It indicates for hypoxia or insufficient oxygen perfusion. Load, letter L, is liver enlarged. This is a manifestation or complications of right congestive heart failure indicating that there is a circulatory overload and right atrium dysfunctions. O stands for orthopnea. Patients will not be able to breathe in lying position. Sometimes it is being assessed based on how many pillow that is being used or there is a presence of excess fluid or fluid retention. This is a compensatory mechanism. It's either body or tachycardia, which means the heart is trying to compensate to meet the number of cardiac output that is being required by the system. D is decreased cardiac output. This is the main reason why there is an arrhythmias and some congestions for this pathologic disorder because the right atrium or the ventricle would not be able to meet the desired cardiac output because of functional and structural abnormalities. Decreased cardiac output, this is one of the manifestations of the congestive heart failure. Objective manifestations includes heart palpitation, patients may complain of fatigue, weight gain, dyspnea, orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, and anxiety. In the objective manifestation, I'm going to discuss this based on alteration. First is altered heart rhythm, bradycardia or tachycardia that you can see on the ECG result. There could be changes or presence of arrhythmias, conductions, abnormality, or ischemia. 
in the altered preload this is common for patients with backward failure or right congestive heart failure presence of jugular pain distension edema weight gain increase or decrease in central venous pressure increase or decrease in pulmonary artery weight pressure and presence of heart murmurs in the altered afterload this is for patients with left congestive heart failure where there is an abnormality or dysfunctions in the left ventricle. So we're talking about cardiac output and the stroke volume. So the patients may manifest clammy skin, abnormal skin color, prolonged capillary refill. I hope you know how you're going to check this manifestation. There could be an alterations in the blood pressure reading. There is an increase or decrease in systemic vascular resistance or an increase or decrease in pulmonary vascular resistance. Altered contractility means these are the manifestation that there is a functional or structural dysfunctions of the heart. A death diffuse breath sound, so there could be for gas exchange relative for the presence of secretions or presence of fluids in the alveoli or in the lungs. Cough, decreased cardiac index and decrease in ejection fractions or decrease in stroke volume index or SBI. And presence of S3 or S4 sounds during auscultations in the heart or what we call gallop rhythm or ventricular gallop. Fluid volume excess, it means there is a circulatory overload. I'm not going to discuss the subjective and objective manifestation. Both manifestations of left and right congestive heart failure is present. So our priority is to assess the causative and precipitating factors in evaluate degree of fluid excess and promote mobilization eliminations of excess fluid. Determine the amount of fluid intake from all sources like oral, intravenous, enteral, or parenteral feeding. Assess and evaluate the degree of excess. So, we need to compare the current rate with admissions or previous stated weight of the client. Weighing daily or as indicated, this will provide a comparative baseline and evaluate the effectiveness of therapies. Note and measure the vital signs and invasive hemodynamic parameters which indicated a pressures that may be high because of excessive volume or low if cardiac failure is occurring. Note for the presence of arrhythmias through the auscultations of heart tones for the signs of S3 and ventricular gallop and the presence of murmurs that is suggestive of heart failure which result in decreased cardiac output in tissue hypoxia. Ascultate patient's lung for the presence of crackles indicates congestions and presence of fluids in the alveoli. We need to record the occurrence of exertional breathlessness. Early assessment is very essential. Presence of dysmia at rest and proximal nocturnal dysmia that may suggest congestion and potential for developing pulmonary edema that may interfere with oxygen carbon dioxide exchange at the capillary level. Note the presence of locations of edema, puppy eyelids, and dependent swelling of ankle and feet. Check the sacrum and posterior type. This is the locations for the bony prominence in the part of our body where you can find edema, especially for the patients with heart failure and renal failure associated with dependent edema because of hydrostatic pressure or for the patients who is not ambulatory. Measure the abdominal girth for chains that may indicate increased fluid retention. Measures and record the INO. We need to calculate the 24 hours fluid balance. Plus and minus the intake and output. Then note for the presence of nocturia and oliguria. Because in the nocturia, it is the manifestations of congestions and oliguria indicates that there is more fluid retention because the ADH is activated. Check the skin and mucous membrane edematous tissues are prone to ischemia and breakdowns or ulceration. Promote mobilization or eliminations of excess fluid. Check the prescribed amount of restricted fluid and in intake as indicated in low sodium diet. Administrations of medications like diuretics and other prescribed medication and take note for the indications and adverse reactions. 
Place the patient in semi-forward positions when at bed rest. This may promote recombinantly induced diuresis and facilitate respiratory support. When movement of diaphragm is limited, so breathing is impaired because of lung congestion. Nursing interventions, I already discussed the different signs and symptoms indicated in each alteration. If you're still here in my channel, I think I deserve the likes. And make some comments of topics you want me to discuss. And make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified on my next video. So let's focus the discussion on the specific nursing interventions of patients with decreased cardiac output. So we need to know what are the causative agents contributory factors or the risk factors. I already discussed the risk factors in laboratory tests in my previous video. You can check. I will include the link in the description. Review the laboratory data, which includes the CBC, the electrolytes, the EBG or arterial blood gas, cardiac biomarkers, the troponin I, N, and T, and the brain natriuretic peptide or the BPN, which is the specific test for congestive heart failure. Assess the degree of decreased cardiac output by monitoring the patient. Report for chest pain, location, intensity, and characteristic. I call this mnemonic as leak. They were talking about congestive heart failure, but one of the possible predisposing factor or risk factor is myocardial infarction and ischemia. Assess the client reports and evidence of extreme fatigue and activity intolerance. Sudden or progressive weight gain, swelling of extremities, and progressive shortness of breath to assess the sign of poor ventricular functions and impending heart failure. Determine the vital sign, the hemodynamic parameters, including the cognitive status, note or the vital responses to activity and assess for sign of dysmia. This will provide a baseline for the comparison and evaluate the response of intervention. All the manifestations that could lead for further complications is needs to be assessed. In early detections of changes in this parameter promotes timely interventions to limit the degree of cardiac dysfunction, especially in the presence of distant heart sound. It may suggest sign of another complication, which is cardiac tamper. Administrations of oxygen by MS or ventilator as indicated to increase the oxygen available for cardiac functions. Note of activities in interventions. You need to monitor the rate of IV or intravenous and drug administration closely using efficient pump if possible to prevent the volume excess or overdose. Instruct the client to avoid or limit activities that may stimulate valsalva maneuver or bearing down during bowel movement. This can cause change in the cardiac pressure during bearing down or valsal breath responses, which can change cardiac pressure. So usually, the doctor prescribed to administer stool softener. Rest and plan activities keep a client in bed or chair rest in positions of comfort. This decreases oxygen consumption and risk of decompensation. Impaired gas exchange, it could be an excess or deficit in oxygenation and or carbon dioxide eliminations at the alveolar capillary membrane. So our goal here is to improve the ventilation and adequate oxygenation of tissues by the results of atrial blood gas or ABG and it need to assess the parameters in the absence of symptoms of respiratory distress. First interventions we need to assess the presence of congestion, obstructions, and dysfunctions that may cause for the alteration. We need to evaluate the degree of compromise, in particular respiratory rate, the depth or use of accessory muscles or first lip breathing, and the area of pallor and cyanosis. Check for the nail beds, skin, lips, air loops, and vocal mucosa and symptoms of central or circumoral cyanosis. These different manifestations will provide us the insight into the work of breathing and adequacy of alveolar ventilation. We need to note the report of perceptions of breathing. The client may report the range of symptoms or air hunger, shortness of breath that is subjective manifestation indicative 
form possible hypoxia. So we need to take note the signs of dyspnea on exertion or gasping, changing position to ease breathing tendencies and assume the three-point position. What is this three-point position? Bending forward while in sitting position, placing one hand on each knee. The patients with COPD and congestive heart failure is more comfortable in this position to minimize the respiratory effort. Ascultate the breath sound. Note to the areas of decrease and presence of adventitious breath sound. It means that there is an insufficient ventilation to get enough oxygen or get rid of amount of carbon dioxide. These abnormal breath sounds are indicative of numerous problems or the presence of atelectasis and secretion. It is important to evaluate earlier if the patient is possible for endotracheal intubation, especially if the patient's AVG and autosaturation is below the normal value. We need to assess the level of consciousness and mentation changes. Assess the presence or report of somnolescence and energy level of activity tolerance, noting reports of evidence of fatigue, weakness, and problem with sleep that is associated with diminished oxygenation. Check the pulse oximeter and capnography to determine oxygenation level or carbon dioxide retention. Since the patient is having impaired gas exchange, elevations of bed or upright positions will facilitate respiratory functions. We need to maintain the patent airway when the client is unable to clear secretions or improve gas diffusion. That is all the nursing interference on some of the salient points that we need to check and assess based on the manifestations. Other interventions may vary according to the needs of clients and through collaborative management. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. This channel provides information, lectures, and discussion of different pathologic disorder. Disclaimer intervention and management may vary according to the actual status of the patient, manifestations of the disease, and prognosis of each patient. So learn more, be efficient, and be an angel in the same Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell. I'm your nurse on duty. Until next time.